you have the American dream. You run your own business. But running a business turns out to be more than you thought. It's a pain in the neck. You're not getting where you want to go. You're not getting what you want to get. And you're working 97 hours a week. We're here to help you fix that. This is the Small Business Celebration Podcast. I am your host, Michael Roberts, and on this podcast, you can learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Hi, my name is Dan Klingenberger. I'm an attorney with the law firm of LeBeau Thielen and specialize in employment law representing businesses. And I enjoy listening to the podcast because I hear so many different perspectives on the issues that affect business owners. And running a business in California is complicated and there are challenges that you know every business owner has that are different than others and the same as others. And it's good to hear some of that commonality and uh, be able to learn from other people. Before we begin our interview with this week's successful small business visioneer, I want to take a moment and thank you, the listener, for listening to the Small Business Celebration podcast. If you're listening to this podcast for the first time, you're about to hear an example of why after several thousand downloads in just over a year, small business owners, CEOs, CFOs, partners, general managers, and presidents download the Small Business Celebration podcast in record numbers on a weekly basis. Well, I thank the tremendous content that our visioneer guests continue to provide this podcast, our sponsors, and you, Visioner Nation, who have subscribe to this podcast, internalize our guests' valuable insight, and because of it, are growing a strong and profitable business. And we thank you. Our guest this week is Keith Stoller, the owner of Tax and Business Solutions. Welcome to the Small Business Celebration Podcast, Keith. Thank you for having me back. And for Vision Your Nation, who ha- haven't heard from you in a while, or those who have never heard about you before, tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. I... Um focus on tax, tax problem resolution, tax planning, Mm -hmm. um, to basically try to take the bite out of (laughs) what the government (laughs) needs to (laughs) fill the potholes and do stimulus payments and things of that nature and try to keep more of your money in your pocket. Nice. And how did you get involved with this? Okay. Um, that's kind of a long story. (laughs) I ended up, um, starting out, uh, in taxes when I was 15 years old. Mm. Uh, that's before it was regulated (laughs) uh, by the state or anybody else. Well, to a certain degree, but, um, I had started by wanting to help my parents out because Mm -hmm. I, I was curious about the tax system and all that and that's what you do when you're at home alone and don't have an xbox to play or anything <laughs> like that um, they don't have cell phones to keep us occupied sure. you looked at tax forms i was a weird kid <laughs> um, so anyway um i looked into that because my parents were paying 200 dollars just to get their taxes done now this is back when a dollar still was worth about 35 cents um <laughs> And so it was a lot of money back then, hmm. especially when you consider the fact that their mortgage payment every month was $254. Wow. So $200 was a fair amount of money back exactly. then. Exactly. Um, so I, I put my head to it that, hey, maybe I can contribute something. Um, and since I was bored, I went down to the post office and I got all the all the books that they had at the time. Uh, and we didn't have TurboTax or anything at that particular time. Right. Or maybe it was a beta test. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and. And you had to do these things by paper and with a calculator or by hand. And I said, and I, I basically went through the whole thing and focused and said, you know, would you allow me to do your tax return? I just asked him because uh, I think I could do just as good. And as it turned out, I, I hunkered down and I did it. And uh, it was comparable to the previous year and they get to save 200 bucks. So I said, okay, well, that, that felt good. And you know when you feel good about something, you you kind of enjoy it. Sure. So anyway, um, the next year came around. I did it again, and uh, but then family members, uh, other other members of the extended family, um, wanted a little help too. And so, what do they pay me? You know, uh, we'll work for food. You know, <laughs> I was a kid. I didn't I didn't really need a lot. So um, I said sure. And I most of the time I just did it for free. It was family. Right. Um, but anyway, it just kind of grew. Then it extended to friends, and then there was just progressively more of that. But 
I went to school. I continued through, got got through college, ended up getting a, a master's degree and a couple other degrees underneath that um, in IT, for example, and also in uh, management mm-hmm. and focusing on human resources. Right. And so I had a couple of careers, but there was always the tax, doing the taxes seasonally on the side. Um, and it was a nice little bump, and it was also something that, it, it was different. You know, it, it, it was seasonal, and it went away. Uh, at least at that particular time. Now, sure. it's, now it's year-round. Right. Um, but I learned over time in a couple of market crashes that uh, – or corrections. <laughs> market corrections. It's that's, keep that's, the what positive, con- that's what positive economists call it. They call it a correction. Yeah, yeah. rather extreme corrections. <laughs> um, and I realized that even though jobs come and go uh, and they're very much subject to economic conditions, that – whether times if times are good they need their tax person if times are bad they really need their tax person <laughs> and so i just i dropped everything else and i started focusing exclusively on tax issues and i had grown gone forward from there got my licensures and all of this good stuff um and so now i'm here here i am uh since 2002 doing nothing but taxes and tax planning and uh tax problem resolution Speaking of tax planning, we've had a rather landmark act go through Congress called the CARES Act, which, as I understand, there are four different parts of the CARES Act. And this we've recorded this interview a couple weeks before it airs. And so there has been a second version of the small business funding that has come through. And there's some changes, but some parts of the original CARES Act are still very much in play. And so for our listening audience who may not be into taxes like you are, give us the four general areas of the CARES Act, and then we'll we'll go and talk a little bit about some of the things that you found very interesting that are helpful to small business owners. And by the CARES Act, you're talking about the small business uh, lending portion of it. Okay. Because there are other things beyond that, (laughs) too. Right. But for the small business uh, side, the Small Business Administration uh, was given funding originally, and now the second time, uh, in order to provide four different forms of relief, I guess I would say, for business owners. You uh, you have the Payroll Protection Program, which is is a potentially forgivable loan. Mm -hmm. You had an emergency advance, um, which kind of didn't work out the way they had advertised it originally. Um, You have the uh, Express, SBA Express loan for a bridge capital of up to $25,000. And then you have an SBA forgiveness program portion so if or not forgiveness but uh, it's kind of like a payment holiday so Mm -hmm. in other words if you if you have an existing small business loan then you can take that and and actually apply and um, be able to skip some payments without any negative repercussions okay and one of the things that you found well let's start talking about the first part of it which is the payroll protection plan Mm -hmm. and it's well known that if you apply for the money and this is one of those very one of those sections of the CARES Act that very famously and very well known in the press dried up very quickly. That money was depleted very quickly, and that's the reason for the second round of funding from Congress. But it has an interesting element to it because it's well known that the payroll protection plan is designed for you as a business owner with employees to retain your employees or retain the positions. But there's a nice interesting asterisk to this that you dug into and that you found out. What was that? Um, There are several asterisks. (laughs) Okay. Um, Well, first off, it's um, as far as the retention goes, Congress fortunately had the foresight to realize that um, the people may change during this time. Mm. So maybe somebody doesn't want to come back to work. Maybe somebody is working from home, for example, and they need more supervision, for right. example, as opposed to some people. Some people can work from home, no problem. Uh, others didn't work out too well. And the situation changes. Maybe the employment relationship was on the rocks to begin with before all this and so we want to continue operations but we need to get another person in well you don't have to have the same face in order to get the forgiveness but you do have to be able to fill the same position Ah. in order to have that portion of the loan forgiven if you don't or there's say an employment gap of a 
a couple payroll periods, which happens, um, then there may be a small portion that's not forgivable right. for that. But there's also more because it's not just um, the payroll. There are a few other things that are forgivable as well, including rent or lease payments. Okay. Give us one step back for a second, though. Mm-hmm. So you've got a, an employee. You've got mm-hmm. several employees, and mm-hmm. you need to retain 90% of them in order to get that money forgiven or is it a hundred percent no it's 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 person for person dollar for dollar okay yeah it's up up to a hundred percent okay and then but the question is so if you have an employee that you're having difficulty with or that you want to transition out you can go ahead and replace that employee but you have to retain the position Correct. Correct. And if you're a visioneer who is expanding their business and tends to think offensively versus defensively, and you want to add personnel to this, that added personnel does not qualify. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. And now you were talking about the next part, which was involving rents. Now tell us a little bit about that and how that works. Okay. Well, as opposed to a mortgage, for example, where you have a a fixed note that governs the contract, Mm -hmm. um, lease and rental payments have been given special consideration in this act. And Hmm. uh, those can also be uh, write-offs. In other words, uh, they could be forgivable, a forgivable portion of really? the loan. So, um, of course, payroll being the main focus and right. trying to keep as many people working as possible within the confines of the stay-at-home order. Um, but secondarily, you can fill gaps with with uh, rent or your lease payments. This is nice. Hmm. Um, and people who are sole proprietors that like me that maybe I don't have staff, well, guess what? I can still get a port i can still qualify for this and at least get those elements forgiven so if you're an employer who's got employees plus you're paying rent you have the potential to be able to get all of your employees funded as well as your rent funded under the the current rules of the cares and the cares act correct correct very good. If Visionary Nation wanted to get in touch with you and learn more about how you can help them with their specific business and how these rules apply, how do they get in touch with you? Well, they can call me directly at 661-616-1348 or 844-GO-KS-TAX if you, if you like those <laughs> catchy little mnemonics. Um, you can go to gokstax.com and put it in a little note there to me. And uh, you can email me directly at stolerpr at gmail.com, S-T-O-L-L-E-R-P-R at gmail.com, and that'll go directly to me. Have you pulled your old computer out of mothballs and are trying to make it work during this COVID-19 quarantine? Are you having problems with system updates or viruses? How about questions about using Zoom? Have no fear. The highly trained staff at Bakersfield Bytes is here to serve you. As Kern County's number one rated computer repair store, your business's computers are in good hands. Need to upgrade your computer? No problem. Need a stronger network? No problem. Call Bakersfield Bytes at 661-496-5900 and keep the backbone of your business in tip-top shape. Call Bakersfield Bytes at 661 661- 496-5900 or at bakersfieldbites.com that's bakersfield b y t e s.com We're here with Keith Stoller, the owner of Tax and Business Solutions, and we talked about the very first two sections of the small business portion of the CARES Act. Now, I'd like to move into the third portion, which is a very interesting developing situation because this allows you to actually get up to $10,000 sent directly to you as the business owner. How does that work, and what's some of the reality that's happening with that? Well, (laughs) again, there's, there's... There's an area where you can you can get an emergency advance. You could also apply for this advance as part of the payroll protection application too. You just check the box and it duplicates that, which is nice. You don't necessarily have to apply for them separately. Um, but so many people jumped on the bandwagon so quick that what we were originally told about yes, you can get an advance up to ten thousand dollars, no problem, didn't have any other caveats to it. But um, a few weeks after they opened the gates on that, Mm -hmm. uh, they realized so many people applied that they only had so many funds to give out, so they changed the rules a little bit. (laughs) And so... Essentially, let's say in my case, you uh, I'm a sole proprietor, but I don't have employees. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, guess what? 
the limitation now is that it's so one thousand dollars for yourself and one thousand dollars per employee. And you applied for this. I applied for it. And, and you I, got? I got my thousand dollars. <laughs> A little bit disappointing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for me, ten thousand dollars I can carry. I mean, that actually does meaningfully help my business get through this time period without well, a problem. It, but I mean, again, that's just that's the, that's the rent for the month, uh, and it's but it's a thousand dollars that I didn't have. Correct, correct. Um, and you don't have to pay this back. Uh, no, you do not. It's forgivable. There's weird terms around it, but it is forgivable. Now, one of the other parts of this is talks about a two-week furlough, and what there's been, there's been a lot of discussion about this, and I think a lot of misinformation about this. So, so first of all, tell us what is the two-week furlough, and what is it really? Well, um, again, the, the two week um, the two weeks that they were originally uh, allowed, this came out actually, I think, just in front of Congress passing everything else. So mm. it might actually be a slightly different piece of legislation. Right. But what it did, and this is outside SBA, so now we're done with the SBA portion for a little bit and we're going to just focus on this. Right. Um, what that does is it creates a tax credit that's available on your 2020 tax return for your business mm -hmm. uh, that will essentially cover the cost of payroll and uh, payroll tax if you had to if you were able to retain somebody or uh, potentially you had to, you had to well that, that's basically it the whole the whole goal was if people had to be off then the, the employees were taken care of so uh, if you actually if a, you as an employer actually paid your employees to stay home mm -hmm. then it incentivized that by giving you a full write off or a full tax credit hmm. to recapture when you file your taxes next and that includes the payroll tax portion okay and one of the things that about that is a lot of business owners are sitting here trying to figure out where do I go from here, especially since there's so much uh, inconsistency in the market right now. And we're still going, is there going to be any money in part two of the funding that's that's come through? Is it wise at this point? Well, first of all, let's talk about the SBA loan program as it is. There are four parts to the CARES Act. And briefly, Remind us again what that fourth area of the CARES Act is for small business loans, and how does that work? Okay, um, so we talked about the payroll, we talked about the emergency, we spoke about the bridge loan. Right. Okay, and then there is a uh, payment holiday, is right. essentially it, and that is specifically for people who already have a small business administration funded and guaranteed loan in place. So if you've already applied for an SBA loan and you have an SBA loan existing, this applies to you. Yeah, exactly. And it essentially allows you to skip some payments for, for a brief amount of time, a few, okay. a few months. Um, but that can be enough to help you keep some cash on hand in order to meet other contemporary you know contemporaneous needs right. uh, for the business is it wise to take an SBA low interest loan now even if you don't need it right now for the future is this a good time to go ahead and take one of those loans out I'd say it would be an ideal time um, simply because of the terms how so 3.75 uh, percent Okay. Uh, that's some cheap money. Right. Uh, you could even utilize that potentially to pay off other loans that might be in place, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how you you present it to the SBA and if they if they approve and give it their give it their grace. <laughs> sure. But this has to be done through an approved SBA expressed banker, right? SBA lender. It doesn't necessarily have to be an express banker, although mm -hmm. most of the lenders that have an SBA relationship also have it as an express um, option as well. Okay. And what are some of the strategies? Because there's a lot of things that are changing and in play right now. And this is one of the reasons why Vision Your Nation needs to get in touch with you about their own personal business. But as I understand it, 
the way things are developing, you still have various parts of the government, the IRS, the Small Business Administration, that's still trying to figure out the rules or implement these rules. And tell us a little bit about what a business owner needs to think about in, in, for the rest of the year as they're trying to strategize with these loans, with this money, what can I forgive, what can I not forgive, but at the same time keeping an eye out for what rules are coming down the pike a little bit. Okay, and that that's uh, day by day. <laughs> it, it's, it's evolving. It's uh-huh. it's evolving as as we're sitting here talking. Um, so, it's a hard question for me to be able to answer. But mm-hmm. just that the situation is fluid. Everybody, literally, from from the policy making and uh, level, is probably doing the best they can. Right. Um, so I, I think that the intentions are good, uh, but in reality they're going to have to really give a lot of consideration to this. So all this money has come out, all these loan programs are in place, um, but how they're going to continue to administer it is a work in progress, if that answers the question. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is this is, if anything, Everybody in the business world needs to have a good relationship with their attorney, but this is also a very important time to have their relationship with a tax professional just like you so that they can keep up with these ever-evolving, fluid, changing times. Mm -hmm. Hello, Visioneers! John F. Kennedy said, a rising tide floats all ships. Rise your business to the top by posting at least three pictures or posts of your favorite local small business this month while tagging you, the business leader, and the Small Business Celebration podcast or myself, Michael Roberts, on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Not only will we recognize you and share your post to our over 4,000 small business connections, but we'll also be able to recognize you and the visioneer you have tagged as well. Have fun and gain recognition for your business for free. Post at least three selfies this month with you and your favorite local small business while tagging you, the business leader, and the Small Business Celebration podcast or myself, Michael Roberts, on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook today. We're here with Keith Stoller, the owner of Tax and Business Solutions, and we've given a lot of discussion about the CARES Act and all the four different points with it. We need to make sure we keep our eye on the ball and that we don't fall into a lot of very common traps that happen during a recession because you've seen this movie before. You've been through the 2008 recession, depression to some. Oh, yeah, in 2000, 2001, (laughs) a couple of bubbles. (laughs) Exactly. And how is this recession the same or different than what you've experienced in the past? Oh, um, that's an interesting question because in reality, I don't think that any, we've ever really seen the government move quite that fast or stimulate individuals directly the way they're doing. Mm. Uh, so as, as far as making, say, some of these uh, stimulus payments directly to individuals through our tax uh, filing. So that's where the IRS comes in. Um, I... I <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I didn't see that. I mean, everything else previously had really gone just to business, the, the primary business focus. This seems to be a bit more balanced. Hmm. So, I mean, that's good and bad. It depends sure. on which, which side of the aisle you're on. But at the end of the day, we're all individuals trying to make a living, whether you own a business or you work for a wage. Right, exactly, exactly. But in every recession, when money gets tight, that's when business owners think that they can get outside the rules and they oh. don't necessarily apply to them. Well, um, okay, that's that's another that's another issue or or conveniently convince themselves that I'll just deal with that when it comes. That's, that's usually <laughs> more the mindset that we'll just pretend it doesn't exist for a little bit and then do what I think I need to do. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, there's some good news in there too. Okay. Uh, usually uh, when times are lean um, or let's say jobs are on the jobs are on the line Mm -hmm. people want to dig into say their retirement accounts the 401ks things like that for a business owner it could be a SEP SEP program or a Keog or something of that nature could be a solo IRA well or a solo 401k Um, but the interesting thing now is they've made allowances for that 
Really? They've actually increased the amount of a loan you can take out from your retirement accounts without being subject to the 10% excise tax for the federal government. Now, give one second here because we still need to make sure and be cognizant of the corporate veil and not piercing the corporate veil because you're actually still taking the money out of your 401k and loaning it to yourself. Mm, yes, but that has nothing to do with the corporate veil. That's okay. actually a trust issue. Now, the corporate veil is another matter entirely, okay. and that speaks to what you do with the money. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. So, right now, let me just focus on that, and then we'll get into the corporate veil. You Perfect. Give me a little high sign or something like that <laughs> if I get sidetracked, um, because there's a lot of information in here, and I'm just going to try to condense it as best I can. Um, so, you can pull money out of these various retirement vehicles. Mm -hmm. You still have to recognize it as taxable income in the year you take it out, but you can get a loan for double, or you can take it out as, as a taxable distribution. Yeah. Um, a loan is typically better if you can manage that, but some people, they just, they just want to pull it out and right. fine. That's, that's, a, that's an individual choice. It comes with consequences. Um, but what you do, what are you going to do with the money? As a business owner, maybe you want to prop up the business. Okay. Well, if you have an entity, then one of the important things that you have to realize is that your entity, and I'm starting to get into a legal <laughs> realm here. I'm not an attorney, so I have to give you that caveat. Check everything with your own personal attorney uh, that I say uh, in this regard. But once you pull that money out, and let's say you want to make a loan to your business. Right. Well, that has to be recognized by a, a vote of the board, even if it's only one person. So you have to convene the board right. and through the appropriate procedures. And and then the board has to have a vote, and then there has to be a minute for the board reflecting the decision to actually accept a loan from the business owner or shareholder, right. and at what rate it's going to be, uh, what 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 interest you know. So you can't just have a zero percent interest, right. for example, because then the IRS could disallow that in an audit. Right. But you do want to go ahead and do something nominal. You don't want to necessarily punish yourself, uh, and maybe you do say three percent, which is pretty darn good right now. Right. Um, some people may want to say, well, let's make it. 12 or 15 percent that's a that's another <laughs> that's a separate issue and you might be pushing some some barriers there uh, from a legal perspective so i would say what if you're trying to get into that realm uh and give your business a pretty big note you might want to check with your your legal representation and make it in, a more informed decision about how that how, how where you should be on that um so that's that's one aspect that and if for some reason let's say the business is actually cash rich mm -hmm. or maybe you get a loan from the payroll protection act and you take the money and you want to loan yourself some money right out of that uh, which is not really what you're supposed to do but maybe you can do that I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you still have to recognize and have a meeting of the minute have, have a board meeting and have a minute reflecting that because if if Again, for an entity, it's an artificial person. So if you don't have it in writing, it didn't happen. Right. And it can be kicked out in an audit because that's if you got audited, one of the things that the IRS may check is your corporate record book. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's piercing the corporate veil, and that gets you into all kinds of trouble. If you do not follow those procedures, yes. Exactly. So one of the other things that also happens in a recession is this also gives us a time to pause for a moment and look at how our business is structured for tax purposes. And what are some of the things that we need to take a look at as business owners? Because we have all kinds of different structures that we can do, but now is a time for us to take a moment to step back and take a look at the way our business is structured. Why is that important, especially in times like this? Well, not just times like this, but I would say, I would say just in general, with the change in the tax law, um, some people who are, say, have higher earning S corporations, for example, may actually find that with the pass-through income rules, they may actually get a better tax deal by switching to a C corporation, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's that's one of many tax planning aspects that you might want to want to think about. Is it's a good time to really sit down with your tax professional and and have a have a prolonged conversation. I mean, it's worth an investment of maybe an hour or two of of that professional's time in order to be able to make an informed decision and say, is this the right time to change or not? Right. 
I, I think I've gone through all the notes <laughs> from the last time that we that well, we got together. I, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, we we could probably talk all day about the various things that uh, Congress has done, or but but then again, I mean, I, we're still learning. Congress is still <laughs> they passed the legislation, but sure. the administration is still learning as far as how to best implement that. And then the question is, by the time Congress finally meets, how is that going to impact other areas of the 2020 tax return for right. us? Because there may be things that happen between then and now for other credits that are on the block right now. Uh, there may be new deductions. There may they may eliminate some deductions. We don't know. So this creates an opportunity and a challenge at the same time. So we may have some very interesting surprises before this year's over. And if Vision Your Nation wants to keep in touch with you so that they can help keep an eye on all these surprises that are coming down the road, how do they reach out and get in touch with you? Okay. Um, well, you can call me directly at 661-616-1348, or if you're out of the area, 844-GO-KS-TAX. Uh, um, you can also um, email me at stolerpr at gmail.com. That's S-T-O-L-L-E-R-P-R at gmail.com. Um, um, and my website is um, gokstax.com. Keith, thank you very much for being on the Small Business Celebration Podcast and sharing with us your truth and your wisdom, and we sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Who is a visioneer? A visioneer is a small business leader who is a pioneer that has vision. A visioneer is someone willing to see the world, not as it is, but as it could be, and is willing to do something about it. A visioneer is ethical, smarter, faster, and leaner than the mainstream competition. A visioneer gives value first because visioneers are in business for the long haul. Visioneers understand the difference between saving money and earning a profit. Visioneers define their destiny. Visioneers create their own luck. Visioneers surround themselves with successful, like-minded people. Visioneers are renegades who defy the mainstream competition and are ready to change the world. Are you a visioneer? Join the Visioneer Tribe at Small Business Celebration on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. Thank you for listening to the Small Business Celebration Podcast. Some of today's music was brought to you by Ted Hammond, and you might find more of Ted's music at ReverbNation.com forward slash Ted Hammond. That's ReverbNation.com forward slash Ted Hammond. If you enjoyed this episode and gained some insight from it for your business, subscribe to the Small Business Celebration Podcast at iTunes.com forward slash Small Business Celebration and give us a five-star review. Also, if there's a business you'd like us to interview, reach out to us on LinkedIn and Facebook and let us know. Until next time, I'm your host, Michael Roberts of the Small Business Celebration Podcast, and we wish you a strong and profitable business. <laughs>